subscribe to simplified biology channel and press the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded hello friends welcome to simplified biology today's topic is patterns of biodiversity patterns of biodiversity now there is an uneven distribution of plants and animals diversity throughout the world biodiversity it has been seen that varies with the change in latitude and even a change in altitude we'll start with latitudinal gradients now species diversity decreases as we move from the equator towards the poles now the tropical region that is near the equator between 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south that is the tropical region or the tropics they have the maximum species diversity and this diversity decreases as we move from the tropics to the temperate region and then to the polar region now an example of latitudinal gradient is colombia which is near the equator has nearly 1400 species of birds as we move upwards that is new york which lies at 41 degree north has 105 species while greenland further up that is at 71 point 71 degree north has just 56 species so as we move from the equator towards the poles the species diversity of bird decreases india has 1200 species of birds similarly it has been seen that the species of vascular plants in the tropical forest like equator has 10 times more vascular plants than a temperate forest lying in the midwest of U usa both being of equal area now the number of vascular species is 118 to 236 per 0.1 hectare in case of a tropical forest it is 21 to 48 in case of a temperate forest and it is just 0 to 10 in the arctic region the amazonian rainforest in south america has the greatest biodiversity it has about 40000 species of plants 3000 species of fishes 1300 species of birds 427 species of mammals 427 species of amphibians 378 species of reptiles and over more than 125000 vertebrates scientists estimate that at least 2 million species of insects in this region are yet to be discovered now the reason why tropics have greater biological diversity 
Ecologists and evolutionary biologists have proposed various hypotheses. Some important ones are like, first, speciation. Speciation, that is formation of species, is an evolutionary process in which population evolves to become distinct species. And it is a function of time means it takes a lot of time for a species to evolve. In the tropical regions where biodiversity is more, the conditions there, climatic conditions or the environmental conditions are fav favorable for growth throughout the year. These regions, they remain undisturbed for millions of years. These undisturbed condition is favorable for speciation and diversification. That is, it makes possible for a large number of species to occur together. While the temperate regions are subjected to frequent glaciation, due to which most of the species are killed. They have a short growing period as the climate here, the climate in this region is harsh to very harsh. which is unfavorable for growth. The second hypothesis is tropical environment. Now the tropical environment is less seasonal, means the climate remains the same throughout the year. That is, it is more constant, predictable, we know how the type of climate will be throughout the year. These things are not seen in case of the temperate climate. Now these conditions promote niche specialization that is niche specialization means the species become better adapted to specific characteristics of the habitat by natural selection. This leads to greater species diversity. And the third hypothesis is presence of more solar energy in the tropical region or in the tropics. More solar energy means higher productivity. Higher productivity which may indirectly lead to a greater diversity. Now this is seen in a wide variety of taxonomic groups like ants, birds, butterfly, moth, etc. The same can be seen in case of altitude. 
Now, as we move from the lower altitude to the higher altitude, species diversity decreases. As it has been seen that for every thousand meter increase in altitude, there is a decrease in temperature. by about 6 degrees Celsius. Now decrease in temperature and a greater seasonal variability or a greater seasonal variations at the higher altitudes are the major factor for decrease in species diversity at the higher altitudes. Now the next pattern of biodiversity is species area relationship. It is the relationship between species richness and area. Species richness is the number of species found within an area of a habitat. The larger the area means more the number of species. You can say that species richness is directly proportional to area. Alexander von Humboldt, a German naturalist and geographer, while exploring a South American jungle, observed that within a region Species richness increases as the explored area increases. But up to a certain limit after which there is no increase in species richness. Means species richness increases as the explored area increases. But up till a certain limit because after this other factors come into consideration like climate, food, etc. Now the relation between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa like angiosperms, birds, bats, freshwater fishes is a rectangular hyperbola. Now in this graph at the x-axis is the area and at the y-axis is species richness. Species richness represented by S and area by A. Now as the area is increased, the species richness also increases but after a certain limit it becomes stable. That means no further species richness or diversity can be seen. This is represented by the formula S is equal to C a to the power z. S is species richness. C is a constant or also known as the y-intercept. 
A is the area and Z represents the slope. Now the Y intercept depends on the unit used for the measurement of area. While the Z, the slope, is the regression coefficient or you can say it is the slope of species area relationship. On a logarithmic scale, the equation S equal to C A to the power Z can be represented as log S that is species richness is equal to log C that is the constant plus Z log A that is the area. Now this is always a straight line. We can tally it with the equation of the straight line that is y is equal to c plus mx. y that is y axis which represents the species richness that is log s. c is the constant or you can say the y intercept. m is z that is the slope and x is the x-axis that represents the area that is log A. Now for a larger area, the slope that is Z becomes larger or more steeper. The graph will become more steep. The steeper graph shows means more area and more species richness. So when steepness changes means the species richness changes. Now this helps us to predict the number of species in a particular area. This equation or the species area relationship helps us to predict the number of species in a particular area. Now the value of z that is the slope of reg regression irrespective of the taxonomic group or the region under normal conditions is always 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 means it can be plants in Britain, birds in California or mollusks in New York. They will all have the same value for Z that is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. In a very large area like say in a continent, the value of Z becomes more that is it will become 0 0.6 to 1.2. For example, in case of frugivorous birds means birds that eat fruits and mammals found in the tropical forest of different continents S sorry Z equals to 1.5. That's all for today. Please do like, subscribe and comment and also visit our website by clicking on the link given below. Thank you. Thank you for watching.